know what? I, I've been very impressed with him. I, I think it speaks to him and his family and how he was raised and the things that matter to him as well as the current players we have on the team because I know those guys, they help the young guys. They help show them the way and, and you got to be of a mindset to, to kind of be a good follower at times. And, and um, Jonathan's both. He's handled the spotlight and he's been a good follower and, and um, I like the guys who are leading. What are a couple areas that he's improved the most in the course of the, course of the season? You know what? He, I, I tell you what's really amazing about him. Like I don't know how many things have improved or, or not. Just consistency. You know, you see a young guy and you always wonder kind of can they be consistent? Can they fight through? And I would say that coupled with how do you bounce back from adversity? When you do something that you don't want to do, you put the ball on the ground. How do you bounce back? What's your reaction to it? And uh, both of those things have been superior. Some, uh, the approach of an older player. So uh, those have really impressed me. What are the things that Danny Davis has done that's been pretty special for, especially for a true freshman to separate himself? Yeah, I mean, he's done a ton, you know, and I, I you know, as, as, as excited I am about Danny, that whole receiver group, you know, I think, I think Q, uh, went in there and, and just decided he was going to change the room by the way he approached stuff this year. And, and not only did he elevate his play, but he, I think he elevated everyone around him. The expectations of that room changed. You know, Coach Gilmore doing a great job with those guys, um, as said is with JT. And, you know, uh, uh, Danny makes plays, you know, and he's got a lot of confidence. And again, the consistency of play and um, the ability to bounce back. and. The, the, that stuff, you know, is you know to find that in young players is is in common. The, uh, the Big Ten players of the year come out this week, and the Heisman's next next week. And do you think Jonathan has put himself in a position where he deserves uh, those type of honors? Yeah, and, I, and and Jonathan will be the first person to tell you, you know, the the only thing he's got on his mind is this week, and that, as as all of us do, and um, and we'll let all those things be handled by the people that make good choices. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll kind of focus in on this, but I couldn't think higher of the guys we got. To see how he's kind of blown up the depth chart so early in the year, I mean, coming in as a freshman, he wasn't the starter. But what does it say about him to, to have the season that he's having, you know, 120 yards away from being, setting an FBS freshman record for yards? Yeah, you know, and that's been it with Jonathan. Obviously, he climbed from kind of no man's land and, you know, scout special teams he was running one day, and then, you know, the next thing he was running with the twos. And, you know, the next thing he was running with the ones after a few games. And, you know, uh, the thing about Jonathan, I'll say it again, is, is his consistency. You know, consistency and resiliency to back, back, to, back uh, to come back from things. You know, th those things are impressive to me. And then being able to handle it, you know, being able to handle the spotlight at times and just blend in with the guys. You know, he, he's got a good quality to him. What worries you most about the Ohio State defense? Um, you know, what doesn't? You know, they're, they're good. They're a good defense, man. They got their their defensive line. I mean, they're they're so deep, and there's so many guys to study and watch. And um, you know, the backers can fly around and run. They can step up and play press on you all day. And they're just they're just really good, and they're very well coached within their scheme. And you know, the, I said about uh, uh, Michigan's defense um, was a defense that was similar, but every guy can make the play. You know what I mean? They're 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 a field full of playmakers, which uh, which is difficult. You know, you you got to be on, and every guy's got to be on, and so uh, so they'll be quite a challenge. What, uh, what things are Jonathan doing wrong when he moves the ball? Um, not holding on to it. <laughs> is it that simple? Or? I, I think he I think he's fighting his tail off for yardage, and, and you can't lose sight of the of the simple things. You know what I mean? The humbleness to do the little things right every single time, regardless of situation, have to be there. And there's no one better coaching it than Coach Settle. So um, feel confident with that, and, and it's just it's just attention to detail. I hear that Coach Settle uh, had him carry a football around class the last couple of days. I mean, did you were you in on that decision at all? Yeah, no, I wasn't. Linemen usually get jealous. They're like, shoot, I carry a ball around. You know, <laughs> they know he plays football and gets the ball. Um, but uh, but whatever works, you know, Seth's got a great way with those guys. Does a tremendous job with his room, and and um, you know just. Having those things uh, sink in and be fundamental to what you do has got to be got to be huge for us this week. What do you think of their cornerback Denzel Ward, and how does he compare to Josh Jackson from Iowa, who you guys saw a couple weeks ago? Yeah, playmaker. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guys that can make plays, and you saw that. Um, we saw that against us. Um, I, I just think you got you got great talent on the edges there, and um, 
And like I said, you give them an opportunity to make a play, they can make it. So you, you got to be on. How is your tight end Kyle Hennessy become a better blocker? He's, uh, you know, we, we we get on Penny a lot and and, and kid him and tease him, uh, you know, and uh, but he really has improved tremendously and. Uh, and I like his approach. I think the first thing is a decision to do it and show that you are capable of getting it done. And then I think then it's being able to do it consistently, regardless of who's across from you. And that's where he is now. You know, he's, he's obviously can do it. And then that fight for consistency, you know, I, I love his progress through the year. I was going to say, though, when you really work on it, does that have to be one-on-one drills or does that have to be in traffic and almost in practice? And it, it starts off with one-on-one. -on -one. You want to kind of carve the drill down to as simple as possible just to let them see in a perfect world in a vacuum exactly how you're supposed to be. And then and then now you got to do it when there is a lot of things buzzing around you and, and the picture's changing. So um, it's a progression. You can't block at 220 pounds, can you? You also have to have the... Yeah. Well, Ross does a great job. Coach Kay in the weight room does a tremendous job. And Kyle and all those guys shot and... and uh, they, they, they really do do a tremendous job with those guys, help them take care of their bodies, help them with nutrition. You know, Coach Snead does a great job with the nutrition, but they change. They change your bodies if it's important to them and if they work out, and it is to him. As a as able to practice today? Just, he's just doing very minimal right now. Didn't do much at all, so we'll kind of see where he is. Is this a big, I think this is like a big opportunity for Kyle to really step up and show, and show the improvement he's made yeah, he's done a ton. Yeah, he's done a ton throughout the year. He's he's made a bunch of plays. Got a got a ton of confidence in him. But yeah, I, I think it's the same at each position. Everyone's had an opportunity to step up. Happened with Alec Engel, you know, stepping up for Austin Ramish comes through in the Indiana game, makes big plays, and it, it, it happened with KP having to step in. It's happened with Danny having to step in. So this this group has has been next guy in. It's got to be ready to roll and and um, and. W if, he, if Z wasn't able to go, then we'll have guys step up. I know Alex wasn't starting in the Big Ten Championship last year. He played a little bit in the Cotton Bowl, but why do you feel like he's primed to start and, and really succeed in this Big Ten Championship? I just think, you know, I mean, last year, boy, it seems like a million years ago when it comes to Alex. For as many great things as he did last year, he has progressed so much. Um, his confidence level is so much higher. His control and understanding of the offense and the huddle and the team is uh, tremendously different. And that's the way it should be, right? You, you need to keep growing and keep progressing. And he works his tail off, and, uh, and it shows. And so, uh, so I'm excited for him. You know, we see the interceptions and some throws that he'd like to have back, but he has won 18 straight games as a starting quarterback. I mean, how hard is that to do? It's it's uh, tremendously difficult, you know, and, and things happen in games. We talk about it all the time. Sometimes you don't do something you, you hope to do. Or something Sometimes something just odd happens. It gets tipped or something weird, and you just got to bounce back and play the next play, and I think that's what leadership is. You know, you're not you, – you're more worried about the guys around you and helping them to succeed than you are carrying something forward about what you did. And uh, and that's Alex, man. These guys trusting him and love him and – and um, that's all. That's been his approach all year. So, like I said, I'm excited for him. Did you have the keys to a successful end of that? Um, not giving away state secrets, I guess. Really, not much. You know what I mean? You, you, you just you, you just try to work hard to run base plays, and, and when teams are working hard to take those away, sometimes you know they they leave you a, a loophole to make something happen. And pretty unique situation to a couple teams that we played. And nothing more than that. I assume that gives defenses a little more to think about, though. Yeah, yeah. It sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, their teams are pretty good, and, and but you know, it was. It's good that when you do have something, that it works for you. When it comes to Austin and just the versatility, what does he bring to this offense? Being a ball carrier, being a lead blocker. And, Ram? Yeah, Ram. Oh man, I think we have got two great fullbacks, man. I think Austin Ramish and Alec Ingold are outstanding. Um, Austin's been playing at a really high level, and when he's not in, we got the same confidence in Alex. I uh, love him. Um, Austin's a talented kid, as, as Alex is. Uh, Austin, speaking specifically about him as a senior, he's made a lot of plays this year. He's done a tremendous job blocking. He's unselfish, and when he's had opportunities to make plays, he's done just that. So uh, I think he's having an outstanding year. Joe, watching uh, your offense go through, uh, go against your defense throughout the offseason, did you get a sense that the defense could sort of elevate themselves even more this year than the last, last couple of years and they would be this, this good? 
Well, uh, I know this. It's a uh, the, the defense is very, very difficult to prepare for. It just is. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, it's a little bit different. And um, and as much as you work to prepare, there's always a wrinkle too that'll be a little bit different. And um, and I, I think that no matter how you do camps, camp. You get used to each other, you get used to personnel, this guy does this, that guy does that, here's this pressure here, and you get used to each other a little bit. So I know when it's a week to get ready for somebody, it's a whole different, it's just a whole different game, and it's a lot of hard work, you know, whether you're getting ready for another team, be like us getting ready for Ohio State's defense, it's a lot of work to try to get it down in a week to be to be able to be efficient and be able to make some plays, and, and it'll be the same thing for them. What kind, of guys. what kind of challenges do Hubbard and Bosa present off the edge for them? Um, just playmakers. Again, they're playmakers. Like they, they can win the one-on-ones is what it means. And um, they have the ability not only to win, but to get to the quarterback and to create havoc when they get there. You know, they're, they're, they're outstanding players. They have, uh, um, they have an array of moves, and they, they got great confidence. And they're complete. They got strength. They got power. They got speed. They got size. So uh, they'll be a great challenge. Back to your tight ends. Is it true you won't play them if they don't block? That's kind of the impression. Well, it, it, here's how we've always explained it. To be in there as a second tight end, you got to be better than the next guy on the field. So you got to be better than the fullback or the third wide receiver. And uh, be a third tight end on the field, then you better be better than the second receiver or the fullback. And it's kind of you, you, you're trying your best to put personnel groups out there that are the best players you can get on the field. And then obviously you got different packages, but you know, if you're going to be a if if you're going to be a playmaker in the pass game, a lot of that comes off of play action, especially when you use multiple tight ends. And so yeah, you better be able to better be able to block.